Another week of New York Mets baseball is in the books, which means it's time to recap, analyze, and predict another week in New York Mets baseball. Welcome to Mets Weekly, presented by Empire Sports Media. This was a good week for the Mets, but definitely not perfect. They started off on a good note, facing the Cincinnati Reds, beating the Cincinnati Reds in that first game 5-1. Hero of the game to me is Chris Bassett going the eight innings. He gave up eight hits, he walked a batter, but he threw 114 pitches, and even though there were a ton of jams, Chris Bassett was able to escape just about every single one. And the only run given up by Bassett was an unearned run, and we've seen this all year from Chris. He's been a guy that's really gone deep into games, thrown a ton of pitches, and it's been a big reason why the New York Mets have been so good this year. It's not only the start that Bassett has, but what he's able to do preserving that bullpen, it allows him to win the following games throughout the course of the week and the games before, because the Mets have the ability to really use their bullpen a lot against Atlanta because they have somebody like Chris Bass in the rotation that you could use your relievers for other games because Bass is going to get, throw a ton of pitches and really help rest your bullpen. In this game, it was some of the new guys that really stepped up as you had Tyler Naquin driving a couple of runs, Daniel Vogelback driving a run, and of course Marte driving in a couple of runs as well. So that was a nice solid win for the Mets. The first one, Adam Adovino closed it out. The game was another solid one. Carlos Carrasco goes six and two thirds innings, giving up a couple of runs. So again, the New York Mets getting that good starting pitch Pitching, not only as far as the runs given up, but how deep they're going into games. So, Cross Carrasco also trying to rest the bullpen as much as he can. Michael Givens came in, get that final out of the seventh. Trevor May, it was a pretty ugly eighth inning, but he got it out of his scoreless, and then Seth Lugo, a perfect ninth inning. Offensively, one of the new guys stepping up again. Darren Ruff had a nice late two RBI hit. Jeff McNeil had a home run in this game. Francisco Lindor hit a home run, so that's another solid win for the Metropolitans. And then Wednesday, this one was a bit of a laugh for the day game. Mets winning 10-2. You had just about everybody step up. Lindor had a couple of hits. Alonso, multiple hits. Vogelbag, multiple hits. Naquin, multiple Hits. You already multiple hits. So New York Mets really put a beating down on Cincinnati, and this was nice to see because again, take care of business, beat the teams you're supposed to beat. It's one thing to beat Atlanta four out of five, that was great, but you don't want to have those letdowns. You have to keep your foot on the gas pedal because the Braves won six in a row this week. So the Mets have to be almost perfect in order to keep that ground over the Braves because the Atlanta Braves seem to beat anybody, not name the New York Mets. On the pitching side, I mean, this was a pretty typical time on Walker starts. Six innings, a bunch of base runners, but only giving up the two runs. So the results are there. The way he does it, it's not pretty, but it gets the job done. Seth Lugo scored the seventh, Trevor Williams scored his eighth, and Adonis Medina, a perfect ninth inning. A guy that definitely should have been here earlier and should be pitching more frequently. Then the Mets began their series with the Philadelphia Phillies, who have been playing really well recently, and the Phillies won the first game 2-1 to one in 10 innings. This is a very disappointing game for the Mets, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. You're going up against Ranger Suarez here, and Suarez has had a good year, but he isn't this good. So I was very disappointed that there just was not much offense going on from the Mets. Only a few hits. You know, you get one from Guillaume. One from Nito, one from Marte, one from Lindor, one from Ruff. So it's just hits kind of sprayed all over the place, not hits consecutively to drive in runs. Obviously, Jeff McNeil got hurt early in this game on a slide. Eduardo Escobar left early with side tightness. It definitely was frustrating to lose Jeff McNeil so early in the game. He's been a pretty big piece of this team, but still, that's no excuse. I mean, other guys like Nimmo, Canna, and even Tyler Naquin really have got to step up when the other guys go down injured. They wasted a good start for Max Scherzer. Seven innings, he gave up the nine hits, but similar to Bassett, Max Scherzer is one of those guys that you could put on a ton of base runners. Doesn't matter the situation. Could be a runs in scoring position, runs in scoring position, less than two outs. Guys like DeGrom, Max Scherzer, Chris Bassett, they get even better when there's runners in scoring position, and that's why they're able to escape so many jams. Adovino scored his eighth, Edwin Diaz, really nice score his ninth. Michael Givens, I mean, he pitched pretty well. He just gave up contact. I mean, that's the thing. When you're coming in the 10th inning, you need more strikeouts, and it can't be a strikeout after the guy already scored. You know, just a ground ball and a sacrifice fly, and that was all Philadelphia needed to take the lead. Marte's throw, Nito said he could have made the play. It was pretty close. If he was able to scoop that throw that bounced in the home plate, it allowed the game to go even an additional inning, but you know what? There was a bad call against Tyler Naquin. And the Mets sending Starling Martin the ninth inning on Vogelback's fly ball to left field. It was a bit risky, but I liked the chance there.
there because again it's bottom of the ninth that was your last chance at walking off and not have to deal with the x-ray as well you're gonna need a perfect throw from verling and that's exactly what happened so Marte was out at home but again definitely very disappointing for offense that had been doing pretty well recently and then the next game the offense was disappointing again but they were able to get away with it because they had jacob de on the mound going six scoreless innings only two hits 10 strikeouts no walks 76 pitches lugo scored seventh may scored his eighth Edwin Diaz scores ninth. He walked a couple batters. His slider was breaking too much. It was going into the dirt into the other batter's box. But Edwin Diaz was able to get the outs he needed to preserve the victory. Offensively, you're looking at a double from Marte. Alonzo bringing him home. A hit from Guillaume. A hit from McNeil. A walk from McNeil. That's about it. Aaron Nola was dealing. Every now and then, he tends to have these gems against the Mets. He's a pretty good pitcher. But again... That's still no excuse. I mean, when it comes down to the playoffs, you're going to be facing good pitchers night in, night out. I would like to see them score at least more than one run for Jacob DeGrom. I mean, DeGrom is great, but to ask the guy to be perfect, as good as he is, that's really tough to do on a consistent basis. And then in the finale, the Mets win 6 to nothing. You had a few guys step up in this game. A lot of cheap hits, a lot of bad bit hits, soft contact, bloopers, mistakes by the Phillies defense. Who would have ever predicted? You had a lot of guys get in on the action. Nimmo's on base a couple of times. Marte's in there. Francisco Lindor on base a couple of times. Alonzo hit. Vogel back. Beautiful home run. Mark Hanna a couple of hits. Guillaume hit. McNeil a hit. James McCann a hit in an RBI. Guillaume left early on the James McCann hit as he was rounding third. He had a bit of left groin tightness so we'll see how that goes. Starling Marte had groin tightness earlier in the year. He avoided the injury list but he did miss a few games. That's pretty problematic right now with Eduardo Escobar still dealing with that side tightness that's only allowing him to bat left-handed which is his much worse side and even then he still doesn't look fully comfortable and in the field he didn't look like he had too much mobility there either so we'll see how bad the injury is from Guillaume I know the Mets are looking at some of their guys from the 40-man roster the Mets were considering calling up either Kramer Robertson or Gusuke Katoa both of those guys I mean I don't think they'll be able to help all that much there's another guy in the minor leagues I think could help quite a bit and probably become the full-time starting third baseman but the New York Mets are waiting well, hopefully he gets here soon that's a topic for another day but this past week isn't what's big it's this next upcoming weekend just to stretch of games in general that's really going to be a very big test for the Mets and a very big indicator on how this season's going to go. They have a, another big four-game set coming up against the Atlanta Braves with a four-game set against the Philadelphia Phillies right after that. And then two against the New York Yankees, who even though the Yankees have struggled, we know the Subway Series is still going to be intense. The Yankees are going to be looking for payback after the Mets won both those games at City Field. Let's start at the beginning. You're going up against Atlanta. First game, you got Spencer Strider on the mound. He's going to be looking for revenge as well after all those lucky hits that the New York Mets got. So we'll see if the Mets get lucky again. Now Spencer Strider performs against Carlos Carrasco, who pitched pretty well against the Braves his last time out. Second game will be a little tougher. Tywin Walker, he gets his second chance at the Atlanta Braves. His first start went absolutely awful. He better not do it again. He's going up against Charlie Morton, and Morton has not been as good as he's been in years past. Morton didn't pitch in the previous series between the Mets and Braves, so we'll see how he does this time. The Wednesday game, you got Max Scherzer against Jake Odorizzi. You love your chances there. Jake Odorizzi, he pitched okay against the Mets. Really not great. Uh, Max Scherzer, you just always feel confident when he's on the mound. And the same goes for Thursday. You have Jacob DeGrom on the mound against, as of right now, it's to be announced. It still could be Max Free. If he does return from the concussion IL by that time, we'll see how he feels. So again, this time it's in Atlanta. The Braves really need this series. The Mets can at least win the series again. And if you're up eight games, nine games after this, that would put the Mets in such great positions. We said the last time I played the Braves, don't get swept and don't lose the series. As long as they do that, they will still be in really good shape by the time that series is over. And then they get another crack at the Phillies. This time they're going to be in Philadelphia. So the Phillies... They still don't really scare me. I imagine Kyle Schwarber will probably be back full time. He was limited only to one pitch hit outing in the second game of the series. And we know Schwarber crushes the Mets. You're going to be in a more hitter friendly ballpark in Citizens Bank. So we'll see how that all plays out. So again, this is a really big week for the Mets. So it's going to be a lot to recap next week. So until then, make sure you're watching the Mets Weekly channel every day for that daily content. You're going to EmpireSportsMedia.com for all your New York sports needs. And until next one, let's go Mets. Thanks for watching. Hey.